Hello and welcome to another Bones 5 Kickstarter review. Today we'll be looking at the ninth group of add-ons I managed to pick up. And as the title suggests, we'll be looking at the Hammer Fist Catapult, the Death Rattle Ballista, the Far Flinger Trebuchet, the Dragon Bust, and the Encounter Shadows of Ravenholm. All of these are currently available in the 5.5 Pledge Manager. If you're interested in acquiring them or any other Kickstarter item, scan the QR code at the end of the video or visit pm.reapermini.com or reapermini.com for more information. If this is your first time seeing a review in this series, I have many more deep dives on my channel for you to check out. But you can get to them quicker by clicking the card in the corner of the video or by checking out the links in the description. Alright, now without further ado, on with the review. First up, we have the last encounter we'll be looking at from this Kickstarter, the encounter Shadows of Ravenholm. This is a vampire themed encounter with a good variety of figures and some nice large terrain pieces. And I think you'll find this is one of the stronger encounters of the Kickstarter as well. But if we're gonna determine that, we'll need to get a closer look. These first figures are the three vampire daughters. They're all fairly thin figures with little bases, making them very easy to accidentally knock over, but that's about it for my complaints. These all have very nice bits of character, and the poses lend themselves to social settings as well as combat. Each of these ladies is dressed in a variety of nice fabrics and showing a fair amount of skin in some places, so these will all be great for practicing painting both those textures on a smaller scale. In addition, they're all just pretty neat, and two of them aren't even obviously vampires, so you could use them in a variety of contexts, really. This next one is pretty clearly a vampire, though. This is the Vampire Matron. She looks perfect as a vampire of some nobility, with the long robes, the pompous hair, and the scepter, which seems both ornate and macabre. And as has been the case with vampires we've seen in the Dungeon Dweller set and the Core set, she sports that classic frill that screams, Hey, look at me, I'm a vampire. Couldn't you tell? A great big bad figure that would fit in well alongside or surplanting Stride, I think this figure is one of the best character or NPC figures we've gotten in any of these encounters. The fangs don't stop coming there though. We get two more vampires. These are the Nightwings. A lot more obviously vampiric than the previous ladies. However, you could try to swing these as types of harpies or something else of that nature if you'd like. Now they are missing feathers, so that would be a major impediment. As they are, they make a terrifying duo. It's great texture on their wings and detail on their snarling, fanged faces. The leaping one has to be the most impressive of the lot, though. It looks like she's going in for a tackle of some sort. The way they've captured the motion of her hair and the fabric of her clothes is very, very well done. Hats off to Reaper for this one. A great, dynamic figure to cap the vampires off with. Wow. Our final figure for this set is Helena Greycross, Vampire Hunter. She looks like a Van Helsing sort of character with a Witch Hunter Inquisitor sort of vibe. She'd probably fit in well amongst any of your grim fantasy environments, and the torch she carries provides painters an opportunity to practice their OSL, or Object Source Lighting. Well, she's quite outnumbered here against all these vampires, so I wish her luck in taking down this nest. But perhaps she doesn't need it. Now all those figures are pretty cool, but the best part of this set, in my opinion, is actually the terrain that comes with them. Arguably, this is the best bits of scatter terrain in the whole Kickstarter, as they're the most general purpose bits of any of these encounters. And it only helps that they look great too. You can plop these down in virtually any environment and they'd fit in. They're not covered in skulls or dwarven runes, they're just great all-purpose ruins. And they offer a great bit of gameplay too with unique forms of cover and height. 
whether for dioramas or gameplay, these are just some great bits of scatter terrain. And these are what I look forward to using most in my next games. Now of the three bits, obviously the small wall is probably the most versatile. The archway from before is a pretty close second, but the big staircase segment, now that is a centerpiece. You plop that down and it really stands out. Now unfortunately, Due to the way the staircase is made, you can't really place too many minis on there, at least not ones with large bases. But just look at this. This is some detail. This is some height. You can put minis up on the landing there. You could have minis fire out from that little window. You can get various kinds of cover. It's just great. These are all around just great bits of terrain. For being one of the best, well-rounded, useful encounters in the Kickstarter, I give this set an 11.8 out of 12. Our next add-on is arguably another great piece of terrain, however it was intended merely as an art piece. This is the Dragon Bust add-on. There were three other busts sold in a separate collection from this Kickstarter, but this was the only one that I actually picked up. It's quite tall, about the height of the Overgord from the core set. And it does certainly look great as just, you know, a desk piece, little bust that you can paint up and, you know, use as a paperweight. But it also could serve some nice gameplay potential as well. They managed to capture a lot of excellent detail at this increased scale on the head and the neck of the dragon. And with this stone podium here, you can use this as a statue in some kind of market or temple. Maybe it is really the severed head of a dragon, crystallized in its final form. However you want to use it, I think this provides a great basis of a sculpture that you could create an entire narrative around, as this really is a centerpiece if you were to put this in a town. And while I'm not really a big bust painting person, I do recognize that this will be a great canvas for me to practice, especially given that the things on here are at a larger scale, and so I can practice painting things a bit bigger and then bring it in small for when I work on the other dragons that we get in this Kickstarter. At the end of the day, this is just a bust or a statue. It's nothing crazy, but it does look great and it has some really nice artistic uses and can really amplify a session just from merely being put down on the table. I give this add-on an 11 out of 12. It doesn't cost much, looks great, glad to have picked it up. Now we're diving into the Siege Engine add-ons from this Kickstarter, starting with the smallest, the Death Rattle Ballista. This one actually being smaller lends itself to being a lot more versatile than the others. You could park this up on the deck of a ship, or the bastion of a castle wall, or the front lines of a large military force. Now I'm not an engineering expert by any means, but everything looks pretty accurately built as far as I can tell. It seems to make structural sense. With all the little gears and big coils of rope, you could really put this in a variety of settings and it would look great and make sense and wouldn't seem out of place. It is a piece of medieval and even pre-medieval siege work, so... I mean, it's not crazy that it would fit in. This particular craft is also exactly the sort of thing that an intrepid PC might try to wrestle control over to fire a bolt right into the heart of an angry dragon. So this could make some really nice use of area control gameplay. It looks great. It adds some nice functionality to the game. I don't know how often siege equipment comes up in most encounters though, but still, it's a great piece. 
and so I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 12. Next up is a classic, the Hammer Fist Catapult. Now my catapult was a little bit warped, but that can happen. It's not a big deal. Assembling this one was a little trickier than the previous Siege engine, although it too had a few little issues and hang-ups. All three of these take a bit of time and patience, but I wouldn't say any of them are particularly difficult to assemble necessarily. Obviously the catapult is non-functional, though that would have been neat. The way it is sculpted does sell that illusion of a taut rope pulling back a boulder ready to fling it forward. The rigging that keeps the flinging section from walloping itself is where a lot of the assembly woes took place. This little bar and its little connections had to be very precise, and if your rigging is even a little bit warped, that can cause some troubles. It wasn't difficult, necessarily, but it was tedious. What can you do? They can't exactly sell this pre-assembled, at least not without a lot of needless and time-consuming work. Of the three, this is the one I'm least impressed with. It's good, it does what it says on the tin, but it's not as cool as the others. The Hammerfist Catapult gets an 8 out of 12 from me. Now this next one is just a lot of fun. This is the Far Flinger Trebuchet. This one is great because if you assemble it just right, you can get some motion in the piece. You just don't glue the axles in place, and you can visually represent when the trebuchet is ready or has loosed its payload. It's the largest, or I guess rather the tallest, of the siege engines. This one in particular seems like a for sure area control feature that would be best used as something the party and another group would try and fight to take control of, whether that be to aid in a siege or halt it. Assembling this one was actually fairly straightforward, though it did take a bit of finagling with the struts to get them to slot in at the right angles. And making sure not to glue any of the axles was a bit of a challenge, when I succeeded then, nevertheless. I like all the shields on the one side. They're all very nice and unique and represent some great painting opportunities. All in all, I'm just very happy that this was made in a way that I was able to give it the movement it really deserves. And though it's definitely a bit bigger and that can in some ways make it less useful or reasonable to throw it out on the tabletop, it's still a really cool, really neat figure. I'll give this final siege engine a 9 out of 12. But before we conclude our add-ons in this video, I do want to say that I feel like there was a bit of a missed opportunity with all three of these siege engines. You see, it would have been really nice to have gotten some ammo piles with these, like piles of round stones or bolts, or even rope and chains, the type of things that would be useful for these sort of things. And we don't get any siege crew, and that's... A little unfortunate as well. Perhaps this is something that when these hit retail, Reaper can consider. But with that, we've completed our ninth add-on review. Only a couple more of these videos to go, but there's some big add-ons coming in them, so stay tuned and stick around for a wrap-up video after that and many more videos to come featuring some other Kickstarters, as well as many minis that I've been painting along the way. But what did you think of today's video? Will you pick any of these up? Was the vampire set the best encounter? Or does one of the others featured in the previous videos in this series take the crown? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you found this video enjoyable, helpful, or some other adjective, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I'm having a great deal of fun making these and it's very motivating seeing your support. Even just a single like or a comment can really make the whole day of a small creator like myself. 
And remember, if you want to get any of these minis, you're going to need to go to the Bones 5.5 Pledge Manager soon. It's not going to be open for too much longer. So head to pm.reapermini.com or reapermini.com for more information or scan that QR code. In my wrap-up video, I will talk about what I would recommend buying from the Kickstarter and give my general rankings on all of these add-ons and sets. So keep an eye out if you're still on the fence on what to get. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and let's go paint some minis.